Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Saturday, which means it's time for a new FL Basics tutorial. This one is about bass drum, which is this guy here. So uh, before, uh, there was a plugin called Fruit Kick, or maybe just Fruity Kick, but uh, it's basically, it was a kick, kick drum synthesizer, and it, it was functional, it was good, and now I have bass drum, which is a much more versatile and uh, improved idea. So I have here the default. This is what you get when you load it up, and you get a whole bunch of knobs and cool stuff and all sorts of stuff. I put EQ so we can kind of see what the uh, sort of things that we do does to the sound kind of deal. Um, now, when I, I hit notes on the keyboard, uh, all of them are going to make the same pitch, pretty much no matter what. So just keep that in mind. Um, so let's look at what we have. So the way the bass drum works is that there is a, a uh, main and slave um, sort of kick synth. They're basically just a, an oscillator of that, uh, that you know falls in such a way that it makes a kick sound. There is um, this thing in the middle which actually is a sampler, and you can load in uh, you know pretty much anything. Um, and there's a bunch. There's a couple you know uh, pre pre made ones, and then you can load in make the the load option, or you can click and click a thing from some voice and drag it and drop it in there, and it'll load that too. Um, and then we have a click sort of creator over here, and it has various options for like levels, cutoff, and frequency of various things. And such. We have master controls where we control the overall attack, the sub bass amount, and the drive for or this distortion. Now, as for controlling pitch, we have the sampling ratio knob over here, which does more or less control pitch, except that it does so by uh, changing the internal uh, sampling settings. So, like at a lower sample sample rate or a higher sample rate, and then you know, as it's uh, resampled into forty four point one or whatever sample rate you have, so I'm using forty four point one it'll be uh, you know, a, lo a lower or higher pitch. However, extreme settings of, of higher or lower uh, amounts will actually net you not just pitch differences, but also like uh, fidelity differences, which are kind of cool sometimes. And so that does. We have output level and we have a duration, which, you know, pretty straightforward. Now the way that this works is that we have this mass, we have this main and a slave. Now the main has a base, uh, a peak, and a slide. Now this is base as in B A S E, which is to say that the the base um, amount that it'll go to, and then the peak controls where it begins its descent because the kick sound is generated by uh, basically having a pitch envelope on a on a, on a sound, anything really. A sine wave can do it, and it's going pew, down really, really hard. So we have the peak, we have the peak and base, the beginning and end of the slide, and then how long it takes for the slide there. That's more or less what's up with that. Now I have this slave thing over here, which also has a, a base, a peak, a slide, and a phase. Now, the thing about the slave is that it's called slave, and not just another main, is because it, it is these are settings relative to the main settings. So we have a base, which we set to be, in, and if, then if we change the, the main base settings, the slave base, you can kind of see the different peak there. The slave base setting will move more move according to the main position. So that's what that does. And then we have a peak and a slide that's worked for that. And then we also get a phase setting so that we can alter the phase of the, the main and the slave to, you know, do cool things. You know, it does neat stuff when, you know, there's cancellation or not cancellation in between the frequencies that you set in particular locations because you can make the slide be different speeds for the two, which create interesting uh, oscillations. And then we have the click. Like we said, we have a level, a cut, frequency, The click is independent of the main and slave settings, as I just demonstrated. I didn't actually know if it was, I just wanted to see if it did. It did, so there's that. And then in the uh, sample settings, we have uh, various options. We have, uh, you know, ADS, attack, decay, sustain.
pitch filter mix and delay I'm not totally sure what a negative delay is in this context but there it is uh, I guess it would delay the, the main according to before the hit so that's kind of cool actually yes so that's more or less it in terms of uh, what bass drum is and how, how it pretty much works. But this is like basically the ultimate kick tuner, you know? And uh, as for creating a kick sound, this is actually rather nice because you can uh, high pass a normal kick, you know, and keep its more realistic uh, sample sound or even just load that sample into the, the bass drum uh, kind of thing and mess around with the pitch and mixing and filter and then use the synth, the main and the slaves uh, synth kick synthing to create the perfectly tuned bass in your kick. And that's pretty handy, I have to say. Uh, there's a crap ton of presets. Um, I used one of these on my track Anticoder. I don't remember which one. It was layered with um, an, on one of the other uh, kicks. That was one of these, I forget. But you can make a pretty huge variety of sounds. And cool things like that. I think it's a pretty, pretty awesome... Uh, addition to the plugin. This is a free plugin that you get this when you get FL11. It's just there. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions about this, uh, let me know. Um, oh, sample loading. So um, I mentioned that you can load samples um, by dragging and dropping and stuff like that. Uh, when I first found out about this, I attempted, I attempted to demonstrate that this could work by dragging one of these over and nothing happened. And that's because while these over here are saved, their wave files are not actually wave files. They're compressed wave files and they're actually OGG or something. I had to consult the image line people, but um, the reason why I had the slice beats folder open up to one of those snare uh, samples is because uh, it does actually load wave files. So if you have a if you have a wave file of some kind that you want to load, it will do it. As you you know, you saw me do that. So just keep that in mind that when you try doing it and it doesn't work, that's why. It's because it's not a wave file. It loads wave files, but this is the thing that they might change. So yeah. Anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. As usual, have a nice day.